pocket. Keep his pockets from you, though. Oh, don't do that, because then I can get up there and say it. Because I oh. think, wait, I think I do one, too. Because, yeah, because you're beating up Dennis, so I have to take the door. Oh, so I hope I can say that. Keep his pockets from you, though. Okay. Okay. All right. So, I, as for my end, that's pretty much, okay, the beginning half for Jerry, um, that's a mic show. Yeah, it really, it really did. Nunchka, Nunchka, Nunchka. But it's the I never noticed it because I'm looking at the script. I didn't know he was looking at me like. Is that the one? Or you know what I mean? Yeah. Nunchka, Nunchka. Last week, last week, we we put that in because all of a sudden she started laughing. She said, "Comedy? Did you add that in there?" It's like, yeah, it went from Transylvania to Bahijan to Spanish. Like she was Transylvania, and then she switched up to Cuban. Yeah! His head jerked from oh, the Oh, my. She Cuban? Shoes, glittery jewels, and unmistakably tongue twisting dialogue. 
as she gave us the South American way. After taking trips to the Latin Oasis, we walked with royalty as Mickey Rooney and Betty Davis were crowned as kings and queens of Hollywood in 1940. Woohoo! <laughs> he must have gotten another kiss in a lot of time. Thank you, Andy Hardy. So now, as always, on behalf of the cast, and we invite you to sit back and enjoy yourselves as you allow us to entertain you. And now, here, here he is, folks, Henry Blendon. Good evening, folks out there listening to your homes. We need to all who are brave enough to join us here tonight. Now, before we get underway with tonight's scheduled program, I'd like to take a moment to speak to our good friend, Jerry Morgan. Hey, Jerry. Yes, Henry. Did I hear you You put in for a position with me, huh? Yes, Henry, I have. Uh, I didn't know you were interested in acting, Jerry. Why didn't you ever say something before? <laughs> well, you see, I came from a long line of thespians in the theater. Is that so? Oh, quite. As a matter of fact, my great-grandmother received an unprecedented six-minute standing ovation back in the early 1800s with her portrayal as Lady Macbeth in Shakespeare's Macbeth. Is that so? Later on, my grand-uncle, who would become one of the first in our family to open up a now famously historical theater in Paris. Moulin Rouge? No, Henry, I need a real theater. Something you can feel running through you as you look upon the beauty of the arts. Gentlemen, if you're thinking what I'm thinking, I believe I should leave that one alone. <laughs> this leads to my father entering the motion picture business as one of the first group of writers for Paramount Studios. Really, Jerry? I didn't know that. That seems all very fascinating. I find myself not only a product of the theater and the motion picture business, I've become more or less called by it. I have come to love the smell of the face paint in the air, the feel of the bright lights on my skin, and, the the and the way you get butterflies inside yourself before you go to perform. Well, Jerry, it seems you've really been touched. What part are you putting up for? A cue card carrier. <laughs> carrier? Uh, hmm. Yes, well, you sure are touched by something. <laughs> on the other, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we move on with our program with an update with Holly Woodland's most talented actress <laughs> and most prized special, <laughs> Betty Gray. <laughs> Around lately. 
I wonder if that's Dennis. Uh, well, I wonder what Dennis is up to. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a little deal going on with Bing Crosby, and if you could put, put me in, <laughs> put me a little cash, it'll just be enough to make me up to make up for the other end of the deal. What's the money for? A contract? No, a horse. Leave it to Bing. He must be doing something, some spring cleaning around the house. Oh, well, Dennis, how much is Bing asking for? Oh, uh, just three thousand dollars. That's quite a bit of money, Dennis. So how much do you need to put on your end? Uh, three thousand dollars. Dennis, uh, Dennis, you mean to stand there and tell me you need some dough to put on the other end of the deal that you asked me for three thousand dollars? Uh, that's right. And you want me to put the other three thousand dollars? Yes. You mean you have nothing to put on it? You got the skin, Dad. You, you. Dirty rat. <laughs> share? Dennis, when you're concerned, still in sounds more like it. Still? <laughs> I have, you know, I've never stole anything in my life. Dennis, here are your pants with your deep pockets. Phil just sent them over from the cleaners. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh and here, he found this pocket watch. It, it's engraved to Aunt Martha, All Our Love, Eddie Hamilton, 1927. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's this about me stealing? Are you calling me a, a dishonest? No, I'm calling you a pickpocket, charlatan, peddler, pity pincher, schemer, swindler, impractical, and... I know, Dennis, I'm not calling you dishonest. Well, good. Now, that's just settled. That's good, Jerry. Will you loan me the money or what? Out, Dennis, out. <laughs> Tired of scrubbing the dishes, using tucker, uh, tuckered out elbow grease, <laughs> wasting away your energy, scrubbing out the stains. No. <laughs> no need wrestling with your brush or fighting with your dishes. Let pink pocket scrubbing soap do the job for you. Save your vitality for your afternoon book or that evening stroll as pink pop scrubbing soap lathers away your skin and cleans away your dishes. Don't scrub away your mess. Let pink pop soap. Pink pop soap. Hang in there, Jerry. Let pink pop foamy scrubbing soap do the scrubbing for you. And now we go across town as we find Henry reading a magazine. Waiting in the doctor's office. <sighs> ladies, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, you will forgive us as I portray a male doctor with a lot going on in the back in the audience. Um, this being radio, in fact, just close your eyes and and look upon me as a temporary Mel Blanc. Uh, in short, we couldn't afford anyone else on the payroll. We can barely afford us. Beat. 
listening to? It's yours. Oh, dear heaven. Call the doctor, quick. A doctor? What God? You're a doctor. Doctor? Do you know what kind of patients come through here? Now get the doctor, quick, quick. Help, help. <laughs> Somebody get the doctor. <laughs> this one passed out. Wait. <laughs> You're going the wrong way. But the doc needs help. Who do you think we are, buddy? <laughs> We're not real doctors. We're not playing on the radio. A step on the jacket. Don't spare the horses. I hold silver. <laughs> and now we go from drama, drama to drama as Betty helps Dennis with some spring cleaning. Gee, Betty, I, I sure appreciate you coming by to help out with the cleaning with the house. Rachel will about murder me if she comes home to find this place in shambles. Well, she should, storing a horse in the house. George Kingfish Stevens, you are. Bing Crosby, you're not. What's this? It looks like a large plate with strings. Hey, my frisbee. I used to play yo-yo with this. Huh? <laughs> I used to play yo-yo with the frisbee. I was a creative child. Couldn't afford the yo-yo, huh? Nope. I've never had to ask Santa for toys. I had my own workshop in the attic. <laughs> I was the only kid on the block who had a tennis racket made out of Granny's old fashion dress hoop and dinner floss. <laughs> That's amazing. Amazing. It was hard to get a grip on, but I never missed the bottle ever, ever. I can't believe it. My one day off from the studio, and I choose today to be hospitable to Hollywood. Well, Henry's got a doctor's appointment, and Jerry won't talk to me. How did you swing the money for the voice anyway? I called in a favor. I remember that Birmingham owed me. Oh, to get away from Charlie Chan? No, although he mentioned it once or twice. Well, I'm not sure it would be a vast improvement. This place is scarier than any murderers and thieves that go lurking about in back alleys and basements. Betty... <laughs> I've about had enough of your ribbling me about the house my house cleaning. <laughs> You'll feel differently when I when my ship comes in one of these days. For as long as it's taken for that ship to come in, Dennis, the termites must have gotten to it by now. All you can see is the toothpick floating to shore. I can't help it, Dennis. Just look at this junk. Do you ever polish around here? Of course I do. Why look at this? Clean as a whistle. <laughs> Just ask the dirt. Now, come on, Dennis. I don't have all day. What was that? Oh, that was a doorbell. I wonder who that would be coming by to see you at this time of night. It must have... <laughs> <laughs> at a time like this, must be the garbage truck with another load of... Oh, stop. <laughs> I can imagine where all this dust came from. Must have come in the, with this horse. <laughs> hey, Jerry. Hello, Dennis. I want to talk to you. Come on in. You're the house. Okay. Said he came by to help with the little spring cleaning. Yeah, she told me she was. I asked Henry to help me out, but he said he was going to see the doctor this afternoon. I ought to get around to seeing the doctor myself. I think so. The uh, pollen is getting it too. So it's not the dust? <laughs> no, step into the living room, will you, Jerry? We can talk to them. Uh, what's the, the best way? You want me to leap over or hop in? Oh, <laughs> uh, I see what you mean. Pardon me. I'll just take the tennis net into the other room. <laughs> the lawnmower, too. <laughs> now, Jerry, what's up? Well, I've been thinking about it, Dennis, and figured before I'd give you another loan. <laughs> yeah, well, I figured we better bridge the gap between us. Does that sound fair to you? I don't care, as long as we can walk across it. That's what I mean, Dennis. To bridge the gap between us means, means to come to a sort of agreement or understanding between us. Oh, does it? Jerry, I don't know if this gap can be filled. Hi, Jerry. Hey, Betty. I just came by to talk to Dennis about loaning him the money for the Crosby deal. The Crosby deal? 
Didn't Dennis tell you he's already borrowed the money from, from Birmingham? The dust, Betty, the dust. Wait a minute, Betty. Do you mean the to dust. say that Dennis has already given the money for the horses? I don't know. Go down and ask the stallion in the basement. I'm through. Goodbye, Dennis. And the next time you need help house cleaning, be sure to ask a used car salesman. I'm sure they're a lot better at lying than I am. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh... Everybody, wait a minute. <laughs> And if you break anything around here, Dennis, be sure it's your neck. So long, gang. Hold up, baby. I'll go with you. Jerry, Jerry, wait, wait. I just, I was just joking. I was, I was going to, uh, going to go tell you about it. All about it. <laughs> Pardon me, folks. I hope you don't mind if I take care of Jerry's place while she takes care of Dennis. Now, ladies and gentlemen. I think this is the perfect time to bring to you a word from our sponsor. With the ease of a breeze, just a pinch of a squeeze, use Pink Pop Scrubbing Soap for all your dishwashing needs. No mess, just less scrubbing when Pink Pop is bubbling. Scrub away your sauces, mousse, or gravy. Pink Pop scrubs the dishes of the Navy. So on your next trip to the market, be sure your cart parks it in front of your kitchen supply aisle for a pink puff scrubbing soap to wash away your dishes inside. <laughs> Looks like... Thank you. <laughs> Looks like I'll have to introduce myself tonight. When I came back, it seemed like everyone was discombobulated. Henry went to check on the doc. He took him to young Dr. Kildare. And I fear after Jerry and Rachel finishes with Dennis, all of my guys and dolls will be in the doctor's office. Oh, well, there's no business like show business, and the show must go on. So tonight, as we remember a time that was and is the era of the 1940s, we bring to you a day in the life of Hollywood's 1940s trivia and news. And as always, I'm Betty Gray. Newsflash! Motion picture actress Greta Garbo leaves picture business with her last film, Two-Faced Woman, co-starring her leading man from 1939's None Out to Melvin Douglas. Garbo, known for her tragic dramas in the silent era with films such as Love, Matahari, The Temptress, and Flesh and the Devil, to her talkie debut in 1930 in the film Anna Christie when she utters her first line, Give me a whiskey, ginger ale on the side, and don't be stingy, baby. <laughs> This just in. Writer F. Scott Fitzgerald dies at the age of 44 on December 21, 1940. Fitzgerald was notable for short stories such as The Last Tycoon and some of his unfilmed work in MGM's Gone with the Wind, and his only screen credited adaptation for Three Comrades in 1938, and known for books such as The Great Gatsby and short story The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, first published May 7, 1922. In addition to being the champion heavyweight boxer in sports history and becoming the first boxer to defeat six heavyweight champions, Joe Lewis, nicknamed Brown Bomber, makes cameo appearances in several Hollywood films such as This is the Army in 1943 and played himself in The Fight Never Ends in 1949 with actress Ruby D. Lewis would go on to retire with a 69-3 bottom to the third. <laughs> Baseball phenomenon Jackie Robinson joins the war effort as he signs up to serve in the U.S. Army from 1942 to 1945 and go on to become a second lieutenant. 1947 brings about what was and is a historical event as Jackie Robinson engineered the integration of professional sports in America by breaking the color barrier in baseball. In his 10-year career, he overcame numerous obstacles to become one of baseball's greatest players, and his talents helped lead the Brooklyn Dodgers to a sixth pennant and one World Series championship, and would later be inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1962 during his first year of eligibility. Upon retirement from baseball, Jackie fought tirelessly to improve the quality of life not only for black Americans, but for the human race as a whole. Jackie Jackie would go on to become the first black vice president of a major American corporation. This has been you guys with Hollywood 1940s with your host and tired out, Betty Gray. Until next time, stay informed. Take it away, Henry. Glad you're back Woo! How did it go with Rachel and Dennis? Did she find out about the horse? Well, I don't know for sure, but I'll put it to you this way. If I said to you mm -hmm. what she said to him from what he said to me, we wouldn't have anything to say to each other. Oh, I see. <laughs> how about this? I'd rather not talk about it. Uh, how about you? How did it go at the doctor's? I'd rather not talk oh, about oh, it. Oh, oh. 
Just sit on the table, Mr. London. Oh, all right. What do you need for me, need me to do? Ooh. Just remove <laughs> Just remove your coat. <laughs> and we'll <laughs> Just remove your coat and we'll see if we can find out what's the matter with you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 